All right, so what we're going to do today is first I'm going to go into my offers folder here and I'm just going to pick one at random, but I'm just going to show you guys like the foundational way to present and pitch an offer. Um, you know, if you've just crafted a new one and you're not that familiar with it, or maybe you've been doing it forever, but you just aren't very effective at how you pitch your offer. Um, again, whether you're selling yours or someone else's. So, you know, I've mapped out and you can see there's tons and tons. I'm just going to go pick one at random, but I mapped out over 200 high ticket offers for clients, probably getting closer to the 300 mark by now. Um, but what I want to show you is after we put together the offer, I kind of go over with these clients, like how to go back and pitch it. So let's go to this one here. And then when we get down to the offer, um, obviously we build out a little bit. This one we kept really small. Usually the avatar should have more, um, more text to it than that. So maybe this isn't the best example, but Regardless, it's a um, scalability and recruitment consulting offer um, price point. It's definitely a high ticket offer. Right. And really, um, she was working with a lot of solopreneurs that ran agencies, you know, um, 10, 20, I'd say closer to 20 and 30 K, you know, uh, monthly revenue agencies where it was like a business owner doing it by himself or with one partner or one team member or whatever. But they were like, you know handling seven, eight different tasks, right, in their business. So then we mapped out her offer, right? So when you want to go ahead and go present this to somebody, um, there's a few ways you can do it, but I'm just going to get to the point. Obviously, I'm not going to go through the whole flow of a sales call and the whole assessment phase and everything. But what I'm going to do is where you get to the point where you're ready to kind of recap and then present the solution to the offer. Now, for this example, I'm going to go through and kind of present every aspect of it and you know, I haven't looked at this one in quite a while. If you can see up here, it says last edit was June 16, 2021. So it's been over a year since I've even probably brought this up on my computer screen. Um, but I, I think I can just pull it off because I've done this so many times and it'll just come back to me when I start getting into it. Um, but what I was really saying is like, I can present the same offer or my offer, whatever offer I'm selling on 10 different ways to 10 different people based on what they need, right? I really want to focus on the one or two aspects of my program that really solve those big pressing problems for them. But if I want to go through the whole program and the deliverables and then turn the features into benefits and how I'm going to elaborate, um, we just really want to recap, right? So in this case, I know her ideal client and I'll just kind of recap as if we, we've had the conversation. Um, I'll use, you know, whatever the name Joe is my prospect here. So all right, Joe, based on everything we talk about, what I'd love to do is just kind of recap what we spoke about. Um, you just reiterate, right? Make sure I, I kind of got the, the points dialed in. Um, and then we'll take you through some solutions to that. How's that sound? All right, cool. Great, man. So first off, what we had talked about is, right, you kind of been running this agency to a degree and grown it to 20, 25K months um, by yourself. But now you're hitting burnout. Um, you've definitely like flatlined from growth. You're, you're staying consistent, but you don't see any way to add more revenue and also kind of, you know, relieve yourself of some of the duties and tasks. So you're not burnt out. Right. Um, that's part of growing, right. Is being in a, in a good place to be able to take on more clients and not have more stress or more hours added to your week. Um, and that's kind of where you're at now. Correct. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I thought. Great, great. And where you're trying to get to, right, is you're trying to kind of go from those 20, 25K months and burnout to hitting 40K to 50K months um, while being able to possibly take a step back in your business in terms of how invested time you are, right, time wise you are, and, um, you know, how many tasks you're responsible for. So, what I'd love to do now is kind of walk you through my program, what I do when I work with clients. And at the end of that, why don't you just tell me if it's a little easier or you see how this can help you get from where you said you're at right to where you want to be. Is that fair? All right, cool, man. Great. So the first thing I need to do when I come into your, um, you know, come into working with you or any client for that matter is a deep dive kind of business analysis, right? We need to know what you're currently offer. How's it packaged and priced, right? Um, what's your client acquisition strategy? And one of the things I do in my offer, this offer is really about 
um, recruiting in the talent, delegating tasks, and also growing to your revenue goals with more of my organic strategies, right? Um, so that's what we're going to really focus on here. Um, and one of the first aspects that a majority of my clients need is they need somebody to come in and be an appointment center. Now, whether that's like a phone triage center or somebody in the DMs, depending on your business model. And sometimes people kind of fill both those roles as well. So we take a look at that. Um, but we're going to see what you're doing with your client acquisition strategy. And regardless, we're going to find a way to remove you from that role, right? Um, then we want to look at what SOPs are, do we have within the business? And what I find many times is there's a, there's a very high lack thereof, especially with people doing things themselves and just delegating, you know, tasks to one team member or one business partner, right? It's just like, there's no SOP. They just get in and do what they're good at. And then they'll ask their partner or team member, Hey man, I'm not going to get to this today. Can you take care of this, this, and this? And it's just, nothing's black and white. Um, how's your sales process? Is that built out properly? So we want to go in and look at that. And then we really want to assess your scalability and the trajectory of your business, right? Um, we've already talked about a little on this call where you're at and where you're looking to get to, but can we do that and still have the proper margins? Um, sometimes when we do certain things at scale, our margins start to, to dwindle a little bit. So we want to look at the trajectory the trajectory and also the stability of the business model. Um, then we get into your recruitment blueprint, right? So this is where first off, we will actually place people. We will set SOPs in place. So when I go and place a, you know, an organic outreach expert, a triage phone setter, a closer, when I go place something, there's gonna be an SOP for them to follow, to know exactly, you know, how to hit KPIs, what their duties and tasks and expectations are. Um, and then obviously I'm going to get into candidate selection as well, right? So um, I'm going to be finding the prime person within my network, or if I have to look outside of my network, I have, um, I have kind of a candidate sourcing strategy that I utilize to make sure we're putting the best person with the best skill set that also matches your, your kind of core values of your brand um, and implement them into your business. Pillar three is where we really get into the execution phase, right? That's where we get into proper job postings that I need to do. What I talked about with the candidate selection, that kind of dives right into pillar three in the execution, right? Um, job postings, I do all the applicant sifting, right? I do all the interviews and all the onboarding. This is all done for you. So you don't have to be taking your time to find the right candidate. A, that's my background is recruitment, right? And B, um, I have a network of existing specialists and experts at almost every kind of, you know, job phase that you would need to, to fill in here. Um, and the last thing is the ongoing training, right? So once these people are implemented in your business, we're going to make sure that they are staying cutting edge, that they're getting new trainings, lessons, um, training information of your market, and just keep that. So um, ongoing trainings will um, effectively manage and, you know, give our um, team members that we recruit and bring into the business the, the expectations of the duties and responsibilities at hand. Um, a lot of these trainings and what I'm going to be doing is going to revolve highly around accountability, right? We need to know that this person is showing up in your business, what's required 20 hours a week, 10 hours, whatever it is for his role and, and, and his spot in the business. And are they accountable for that? Not only are they accountable for showing up, but accountable for hitting their numbers, their KPIs, the um, metrics that matter within the business, right? And then there's going to be constant monitoring and optimization, um, meaning could add new skill sets to this person to take on other duties, optimizing um, different tasks and, and responsibilities. Um, you know, monitoring comes a lot more with the accountability, right? Just monitoring really make sure that you can go in at the end of the week and look at one little spreadsheet that's already filled out by myself and my team that lets you know within five minutes what this person did in the month in terms of how many conversations did he start how many appointments did he set uh, how many people did he reach out to all these metrics that you need to know um, you'll be able to, to you know look at a quick spreadsheet and have all that information at your fingertips sift through it for five minutes a month and you'll know that your employee is doing what they're supposed to be doing rather than managing micromanaging so this is really um, about growing the business, but taking your time back and focusing on the passions that you really like. You know, when you first started this business, you started to do the two or three things that you're really great at. Um, and with you in particular, that sounds like that is the client fulfillment working with them and closing deals. You sound like you enjoy the actual sales call, but not the whole process, the messaging, the triaging, the pre-qualifying, like you could have somebody doing all that and just feeding you the qualified people to get them on your calendar, right? So if you could really focus back on just the fulfillment and the sales, 
you're going to be doing the things you really love, growing the business and actually more excited about it and not feeling burnt out. You know, um, that's part of it, too. It's not only the time and the, the energy with doing all those tasks, but it's some of those are so menial and boring and tedious. And it's like that's what kind of kills your mojo when you're always doing the things you really love and excel at, um, you know, that keeps you motivated and going. So, you know, that being said, Joe, do you understand how working with somebody like me who can install these these you know, features into your um, business can help you get from where you're at to where you want to be. Yeah, right. That's awesome, man. I totally need that. Right. And the guy like will point at my screen when I've gone through that, when you've presented this right and you have the right prospect and you shouldn't be presenting offers where it's not the right prospect. Right. And it's not offering value. So, you know, just keep that stuff in mind. But at the end, you just kind of position it. So do you understand how this will help you get from where you want to be to where you're trying to get to? And, you know, meta metaphorically speaking, this is the vehicle to take them across that bridge. At that point, you can literally assume the sale um, and just go right into, all right, Joe, that's great that, you know, you see the value in what I do and what I could provide for you and your business. Um, next spec steps is to get you, you know, rocking and rolling, enrolled, onboarded. And so what, what card would you like to use today? Visa, MasterCard. And at that point, You'll be surprised. You're going to get a certain amount of people that just like pull it out and start reading it to you. And, uh, and other than that, that's where you're going to get, you know, overcome objections. And that's where you can get your objections, isolate it, overcome it, and then make sure they have certainty and on to the next one. Okay, now, now that that's clear, is there anything else that's stopping you from moving forward today? Isolate, overcome. Um, but yeah, just a good little tactic and thing I wanted to share with everybody today.